nfl.com slash schedules. There we go. All right, goods. I am ready uh, whenever you are. Go ahead. It is leading with the helmet. I'm Danny. He's good. You can follow me on Twitter at Danny Mata Jr. You can follow him at Fire and Miss. Thank you so much for making us part of your morning as we get ready to count down to kick off on this uh, this beautiful Sunday morning. And in today's episode, Pat Mahomes fa- uh, passes his first test. Uh, big showdowns in the NFC East and the AFC South. Um, Goods is terrible at fantasy football. We'll get into that. But we lead this show off with not football. The Dodgers are in the World Series for the second straight year. Those of you who know anything about Goods and I know we are huge Dodgers fans. Uh, This was a hell of a thing after last year's heartbreaker um, in the World Series. And of course, me working here in Houston, I have to like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, yay, go Astros. (laughs) Like quietly inside, I'm feeling it. Goods, uh, what are your thoughts compared to last year on the team being in it? Is a, the prevailing theme is for you? Are you excited? Are you nervous? How are you feeling? Um, well, this year was seems like a lot more trials and tribulations. It just didn't coast into the series. So it was a lot more stressful and nerve-wracking. So it almost feels like they earned it more this year. So hopefully they'll keep that grind going and carry it against the Red Sox. I think a lot of people feel like the Red Sox and the American League in general was just so much better um, than the National League. But I think that there's something to be said about about having to play the way they did down the stretch, having to play an extra game to decide the division title, having to you know, you know go out there and, 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 and play the Brewers. And, and they're down two games to one in the series. They get a game seven forced on them, and you know they, they pulled it out. And uh, I think there's something to be said about having to grind through it. You talked about the trials and tribulations. Um, You know, we'll see. I I think you might remember this. There was a, it kind of almost reminds me of 2006 when the Tigers got into the World Series and they were playing the Cardinals and everyone thought the Tigers were just going to waste the Cardinals because I think the Cardinals were 83 or 84 wins that year. They weren't very good. They were ice cold down the stretch. They almost botched their playoff seating and, you know, lost out in the playoff spot because of an epically bad September and they won the world series when they were a huge underdog. And, you know, maybe this is one of those things. I mean, I know the Red Sox are certainly going to be favored. Uh, we'll see. Man. <laughs> it's going to be interesting, but I'm just, I'm glad that I, I, I have a team I can safely root for this year though. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah. And you, my friend, you told me you are headed over to the world series. Yeah. It's a, uh a lot of dollars but you know how often do you get the chance to see your team at home in the world series look man i think you are in a spot that most dodger fans would kill to be in there's a lot of people myself included who would love to be there with you uh can't do it um so honestly congratulations to you on getting those tickets i'm uh, super happy for you hope you really enjoy hopefully they win and as i was saying earlier like man uh, you know uh, before we got this show started i hope that you're that the dodgers somehow sweep them and you're sitting there w- watching the trophy celebration. So uh, I'm rooting for you, brother, and I'm rooting for the Dodgers. So hopefully that works out. Um, we'll lead up. So getting back to the football stuff, I promised you a story about how terrible Goods is at fantasy football. I am butchering you. We haven't even gotten the week under uh, the week fully underway because I started the Broncos defense against you this week, and it's wonderful. Which league? It's the ten team league that we're in. We're in two leagues, oh, guys. Yeah, my ten team's and... not that good in that league. Yeah, I agree. It isn't, and I'm smoking <laughs> you. I picked up the Denver defense just for as a streamer this week. That was a good pickup. <laughs> yeah, thirty. Yeah, uh, yeah, thirty-eight points I got for him. So I'm feeling really good about that. But uh, we'll move right into uh, the Pat Mahomes thing and Sunday night football last week. Uh, a lot of people down in Houston didn't see it because the Astros were playing game two against the Red Sox. But what a game between. Uh, the Chiefs and the Patriots, and the job that that Pat Mahomes did in that game. You know, we saw a little bit of everything. And guys, if you're if you're fans of this show, there's a guy on Twitter named Mike Freeman who writes for Bleacher Report. He, he does a terrific job uh, as a columnist. He wrote a really good piece about Pat Mahomes and, and and the performance that he had against the Patriots. You you really saw how early on 
Bill Belichick did things that confused him and threw him off, and he had some turnovers and some missed opportunities, and it looked like he he he, he had a good understanding of of how to handle this rookie and or you know, effectively a rookie because this is only his first full season as a starter because uh, he only started one game last year, but. Then you saw Mahomes come back and just dominate. I mean, how impressed were you with what you saw from Mahomes against the Patriots? Well, he, he keeps getting questions asked about him. Like, how is he going to do against this situation and this situation? And, like, I remember against Denver, he fell down, had to come back from behind and late in the game. And it's just every time he comes across something, he beats it. I mean, this time they happen to lose the game, but everyone thinks the Patriots are going to the Super Bowl, so... I mean, to lose by a last-second field goal against Tom Brady, scoring 40 points, I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think that there's not a – I'll, I'll put it this way because you're right, and, and, and I'm with you completely because you know that if you're a Chiefs fan, there's not a single Chiefs fan that watched that game and thought, okay, there's no way like, – like, like, like every, every Chiefs fan wants a rematch, right? Like, I, like not a single one of them is thinking, oh, we can't beat the Patriots. Like every Chiefs fan has got to be feeling like we'll see you again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And feeling pretty good about it, but like here are the numbers on Mahomes. So twenty three of thirty six, three hundred fifty two yards, four touchdowns. He had the two interceptions. I mean, just unbelievable, I, I, simply unbelievable. And Tyreek Hill is just it just gets better every week. It's crazy. Um, it, you know, Tyreek Hill starting to work himself into that conversation as you know one of the elite. Re- Receiver, or you know, one of the better receivers in football, you know, one of the top five, maybe even. I think right now there's a good discussion to be had between the likes of guys like DeAndre Hopkins and uh, Antonio Brown, Julio Jones. I, I think Tyreek Hill is going to have to start getting in there. I mean, would you agree with that? If you're throwing in Hill, you got to throw in Thielen. Yeah, I mean, just yeah, in terms of the raw production, yeah. You know, but I mean, there's, we we got a lot of good ones. But do you put? I mean, I but think yeah, I, I feel like this the field is changing for sure on who an elite receiver is. I right, mean, exactly. New guys I mean, coming up for sure. Right, I don't think that Thielen is one of the five best receivers in football in terms of talent. I don't think that there's any way he's better than Devonte Adams or Odell Beckham Jr. and on par with Julio Antonio or DeAndre Hopkins. I don't think he's more talented than Stephon Diggs, but. He just catches everything in his general vicinity, and he's just good. And every time I say, well, Thielen's not this, Thielen's not that, it's like you look at the numbers, and every single game, he's doing it. And so at, at some point, you know, like, I, I, I wonder how, how long he has to do this before the rest of us start saying, okay, well, <laughs> right? Because yeah. he just doesn't, he doesn't have the flash that the other guys have. No, but he gets it done. Down. It was like right. Rice. Rice wasn't the fastest or the strongest, but he had great hands and the crispest routes on the field. Yeah, and I, you know, there's, there's other guys that have been, you know, top performers. People forget that from from 2007 to maybe 2012, right around there, 12, 13. Wes Welker was maybe the most productive receiver in all of football. You know, and a lot of that had to do with Peyton Manning and Tom Brady. But I don't think it's a coincidence that he kept catching 100 balls a year. You know, and and the way that he was snaring everything in sight, um, and Wes Welker as a slot receiver and a small guy never really got a whole lot of credit as being an elite receiver. But uh, to me, I kind of feel like Thielen's in that boat, except that he's clearly a better athlete than Wes Welker is. He's clearly not a slot guy who's going to dominate underneath. He can go over the middle, down the sideline. His routes are crisp, as you mentioned, and it doesn't hurt that. Kirk Cousins is his accuracy is off the charts right now. Yeah, Cousins having a great year. Yeah, crazy to me. It, it really is very impressive. Um, but I, I think Tyreek Hill is gonna. You know, there's, there has to be some conversations about that guy as far as where he's at uh, with the amount of speed that he has and, and what he's doing is is uh, is simply a marvel. Uh, moving on, other big stories. Uh, Lady on Bell is expected to report. Um, to the Steelers, at least from a couple of reports on Monday. Um, so right now the Steelers are in their bye week. So this would be right after. So as soon as their their new work week starts, he's supposed to be back. James Conner's there. He's healthy. He's playing very well. Um, if it, it's very curious to me how how the Steelers are going to handle this. In your estimation, how do you think the Steelers will handle it? And then part two of that, how should they handle it? Um, 
That, that's... It's difficult to say. I mean, Le'Veon Bell isn't... He doesn't want to split time. I know he doesn't. But the way Connor's playing, I mean, you got to wonder how many downs he's going to take from Bell and just have two fresh backs in the fourth to beat on teams. I mean, yeah, it worked and for I would... Priest Holmes and Larry Johnson back in the day. Those were both amazing running backs. Yeah, it, you know, like for me, I think that the conventional wisdom is is like, yeah, I mean, if, if Le'Veon's healthy, he plays, he starts. Until you watch James Conner and you see the numbers he's putting up, like, like you have to, th- that guy's got to be involved in the game, right? I mean, he's earned that, as you mentioned, like he, he has to be involved in the game. Le'Veon is, if he's not the best back in the NFL, which some people still say he's the best back over Gurley, and that's fine. Um, if he's not, so he's not the best back; he's the second best back. Um, I, I'm curious as to how the Steelers are going to use him. I wonder if the if the coaching staff will force a timeshare on them, as uh, you know, thinking about the whole situation that led to Le'Veon Bell holding on to this long. I mean, this is where we wonder if the, the business side of things is going to impact the on-field side of things. So we're going to learn a lot. Um, I, I feel like Connor's earned carries, um, but I also feel like Le'Veon Bell has to be the lead back overall. We'll find out. Uh, we'll find out. It'll be an interesting one. Um, big showdowns uh, this week. You know, a lot of a lot of critical games, and uh, we'll, you know, we'll talk a little bit about some of the big games that happened uh, uh, in o- over the last week. But you know, one thing that I think uh, is is interesting is you look at divisions like the AFC South, where the Texans and Jaguars are playing, and the Jaguars just got stormed by the Cowboys, and I have no idea where that came from from the Cowboys. You and I talked about that as a possible upset. I don't think either anyone thought the Cowboys would beat them forty to seven. Yeah, <laughs> Bortles is so good. <laughs> oh man! And then then the, here are the Texans who are on a three game winning streak, but they've beaten three bad teams, all of them in. You know, all of them really down to the wire. Two of them went to overtime. None of the opponents overly exciting. And maybe the Cowboys are probably the best team they played. And luckily for the Texans, the best thing that happened to them is Josh Allen got hurt and in came Nathan Peterman. (laughs) And and I was afraid that we wouldn't be able to talk about Nathan Peterman again. I don't know if you saw my tweet uh, earlier this week, Goods, but here's a fun stat for you. Nathan Peterman has appeared in 10 quarters of professional regular season football. I'm not saying he hasn't finished all those quarters. He has just appeared in 10 NFL quarters. He has thrown nine interceptions. That's impressive. That is, it is impressive. It, it, because like to me, so I, I, Watching like how the Browns and Lions went 0-16 was just as fascinating as watching the Patriots go 16-0. And watching Nate Peterman and how terrible he is. This is how bad Nathan Peterman is. Josh Allen is out. So the Bills, who just signed Derek Anderson, the guy got off the couch like a week ago. He's going to start this week because a guy who doesn't know the playbook and got off the couch a week ago is deemed a better option than Nathan Peterman. He's not better than a guy who just got off his couch. That's insane. I should go try out for the Bills, man. Maybe I could do it. That's what I'm saying, dude. Like, <laughs> Derek, Derek Anderson doesn't even know the playbook. And the Bills looked at a guy who doesn't know the playbook and went, you know what, that don't even matter because Nate Peterman knows the playbook and that shit ain't save him. So... <laughs> Like, you're not Nathan Peterman. You are qualified. We think that you, not knowing shit about any of the plays we're calling, will be at least as effective as Peterman, if not better. Well, as long as he's not colorblind, then it should be better. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> it is incredible to me how terrible Nathan Peterman is. And I'm, I'm really happy that we, get to, uh, that we get to talk about this some more because it really is sensational. And then the unpredictability continues because – you know, one thing I've learned from our game picks is we don't really know a great deal about football. We just kind of go here and talk about it because I think every one of us was would say with some pretty good confidence the Bears were just going to go wreck Brock Osweiler and the Dolphins, and it just didn't happen. In fact, Brock Osweiler looked like he made the Texans look smart for giving him a bunch of money a couple years ago. Is this a unpredictable a season as you can remember 
It really is. I mean, the Jags are playing horribly. Um, I mean, some teams start out the first couple games. That makes sense. That's all right. But now we're starting to get into a good chunk of the year, and the Dolphins are performing way better than anyone thought they were. <laughs> I thought they yeah, were going to be like the bottom three teams in the NFL. Yeah, that just – that to me makes absolutely no sense. I, <laughs> I really – I, I can't figure out this thing week to week. The only thing, I, the only explanation I have for it is that we are in a situation where there's a lot of average football teams. And to if you really look at the Bears, like yeah, I mean they played well against the Packers on opening night, but those great defensive performances since then, a pedestrian Seahawks team, a bad Cardinals team, a bad Tampa Bay team, and then Miami's not very good and they lost. So I don't know how good the Bears actually are. I think there's just a lot of average football teams in the league right now. Yeah, I can buy into that. So it's 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 interesting, and really, like, to me, I think there's only a handful of like like legitimately good teams, and there's a couple of ones that are on the fringe. Like, I I think the Ravens are a little better than I thought they were going to be. Um, uh, the Saints seem to be getting it together, but I I I feel like right now the te- only teams I feel really good about are pretty much Kansas City. New England and the Rams. That's the list. And everyone else, I'm just kind of in wait and see mode. Yeah, there's been a lot of up and down play from all the teams. Even though the Rams, though, there's their deficits are getting tighter and tighter every week. Yeah, it's it, you're, you're, it's starting to feel like 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 they're getting t- uh, tested pretty good there. So. Um, uh, it's it's it's, it's going to be an interesting uh, you know second half of the year. There's still so much to get done, and I, I really don't know exactly um, who's going to separate themselves. It's kind of hard to figure out where we're at right now. Like that Houston Jacksonville game. I'll tell you one thing: as bad as the Texans looked last week, and 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 as much as they should have lost to the Bills, if you're the if you're the Texans and you've got a lot of stuff you've got to work out. You know, time. Sometimes timing is everything. The Jaguars have been outscored seventy to twenty-one the last two weeks, and you can say whatever you want about the Chiefs throwing up thirty on them. The Chiefs will make a lot of good defenses look bad, but the Cowboys putting forty on them. <laughs> they That's got a lot concerning. of open Bortles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. They did get a lot of help from Bortles. But let's be clear about something, though. Like the Cowboys offensively. They don't have – I mean, Dak Prescott is is just a, a poor man's Deshaun Watson. Watson's better in every way. There's no DeAndre Hopkins or Will Fuller in the Cowboys. Now, there's no Ezekiel Elliott on the Texans, but I'm just saying. Like, I, I feel I feel like – I feel the one thing that Jacksonville's got going for him is the Texans' offensive line is atrocious. <laughs> it, it's down there with, with the Bills and the Seahawks, you know, as – and the Giants is one of the worst offensive lines in the league. You can argue it is the worst our offensive line in the league. So that they've got that going for them. But uh, I, I think this Jacksonville game is going to be very interesting. Uh, but the Texans may have caught him at the right time. Um, yeah, man. I <laughs> this has been a thing. So uh, the last question I have for you, really, because before we start getting the game picks, Eagles blow out the Giants thirty four to. Team Carson Wentz is back. Alshon Jeffrey is back. How do you feel about the Eagles? Uh, well, it's not going to matter. I mean, their O line needs work. They're letting Wentz get hit several times a game. The guy can't keep doing that every single week, and it's going to get to him eventually. So, I mean, yeah, they're winning right now while Wentz isn't, you know, in a cast. But the O line is definitely going to need to improve. Yeah, it's gonna. Yeah, that, I, I I agree with that. I feel like they're starting to get together at the right time. I think maybe the stunner of the week for me it was was Pittsburgh beating Cincinnati. And I know that that some people don't consider that a stunner because not everyone's as low on Pittsburgh as I am. But I thought that what Pittsburgh did in that game was very impressive. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the input there. <laughs> <laughs> You heard it here first, guys. That's why you come to us. All right. Okay. <laughs> We're going to get in the game. We're going to get in the game picks uh, on this abbreviated show. Uh, again, guys, if you guys want to follow along with us, uh, 
for game picks. You can go to NFL.com. We'll do this in order. So both uh, both Goods and I picked Denver. Oh, wait. Sorry. No, Goods actually thought Arizona was going to pull that one off last week. You know, I did originally have Denver, but then I read your tweet, and I was like, uh, I'm, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try calling an upset because – Arizona didn't look too terrible against the Vikings. And, I don't know. I thought it would... <laughs> look, drugs are bad. Alright, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's your explanation? Yeah. Alright, okay. How'd you do in game picks last week? Nine and six. I was ten and five. Our only disagreement... Our only disagreement was on that uh, on that Chiefs game uh, where you took the Chiefs, and I'll tell you one thing: I felt way better about that one in the first half than I did the second half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I got a little nervous there watching how that was playing out. <laughs> so I am fifty three and thirty eight and two on the year. I think I got the lead on you on game picks for the season. No, we're tied. Yeah. So oh, we're tied. Well, except for now, you got the Broncos, but the week's not over oh right oh that's right okay yeah so we got the okay so here we go so i took uh all right so i took the uh the broncos as you say to the cardinals so we'll go ahead and start with the game in london titans at chargers uh, i think the tight or the chargers are are starting to figure some things out i mean they've been a little inconsistent but they should be able to handle the titans I agree with that, and if, uh, the more they can win, the more time they buy for themselves uh, moving forward until Joey Bosa gets back. You know, you're talking about one of the premier pass rushers in football has been out for a while, and, and the more time they can buy, the better they're going to get. The Chargers will be one of those teams way better in the second half of the season than they were in the first. All right, so we've been talking about the Texans and the Jaguars. Who do you like? Texans at Jaguars. <sighs> Jags have just been awful, and I know I picked them to go to the Super Bowl, but damn. So I went with Texans. <laughs> You know what? I just I'm taking Jacksonville. I just don't know how the Texans can block them. And I know Jacksonville looked bad, but I think they're a better team than what they've shown. And I, I just gotta believe they can figure it out. And it, the Texans haven't really been inspiring with how they played recently. Uh, I'm taking Jacksonville. All right, so uh, here we go. A good one here uh, in the noon slot, or at least your Central Time. I think it's 11 o'clock your time. But a uh, good one here. Panthers at the Eagles. What do you mean the new slot? Excuse me? What do you mean the new slot? The noon slot in my oh. time. My time zone is at <laughs> noon. Is it 11 a.m. in your time slot? Uh, the Eagles are getting their, their selves together here, so they should be able to beat the Panthers at home. I agree with you. I'll take the Eagles. All right, your Vikings at the Jets. Yeah. Well, they're not in Minnesota, so... The Jets being comparable to the Bills shouldn't matter. So the Vikings should win. Yeah, I was going to say, like, there seems to be something about their own stadium the Vikings don't particularly like too much. Uh, especially, I mean, away from home, they're just a much better football team. I agree with that. I think the Vikings will take care of business. Um, good one here. New England at Chicago. No, I think New England's going to beat them by 15. I was hoping to bait you into that one. I think New England kills them, too. Uh, here's one, the Buffalo Bills and not Nate Peterman at the Colts. Uh, I'm going to go with the Colts. I just, there's just no way the Bills, right? I, I, there's, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like every time I think there's no way something happens, I'm wrong, but I would have a hard time believing the Bills can beat the Colts. <laughs> yeah. I really have a hard time believing that. Okay, so this is an interesting matchup. Cleveland at Tampa Bay. Winston actually played better than I expected last week. So I think the Bucks will beat the Browns. I like that Cleveland got rid of Carlos Hyde, and I like that Nick Chubb is the guy that they uh, that's going to get more carries, that he's explosive. I think it's going to help. I don't think Tampa Bay is very good defensively, but I think they're good enough to take care of a rookie quarterback at home. I'm going to take Tampa Bay in a, good, in a close one. Um, all right, what have we got? Uh, I lost my place in this list. Oh, here we go. Lions at the Dolphins. Now, you want to talk about two random-ass 
Jekyll and Hyde teams right there. The, the, the Lions and the Dolphins, you don't know what you're going to get week to week. So how are you feeling about this game? I, I don't know. It's a coin toss. All right, Dolphins. I'm going to do <laughs> I, dude, I, if, I'm telling you right now, whoever I pick in this game, I'm going to feel really terrible. Like, I'm not going to like... You do the, oh, just pick the Lions. Oh, fine. You fuck it, fine. Yeah, that's, that's a good way. Just to try Lions. to get some scoring difference between us. Yeah, we know. I agree with you because, like, seriously, if you took... I mean, you could have just as easily taken the Lions and you would probably feel just as not confident as I'm sure you do now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I'm with you. Okay. This one, you can argue, is the best game of the day. I think it certainly is. The Saints at the Ravens. Uh, this, this, I think, is a really good one. I think the Saints are they are just on fire. Breeze is killing on all cylinders. Kamara's waking up. Defense is coming around. I think they will handle the Ravens pretty easy. The defense is coming around, but I think but the Ravens are really the Ravens are really good. They're at home. Their defense can get pressure on Drew Brees. Um, I'm going to give them benefit of the doubt. I'm going to take the Ravens. Uh, I'll give them benefit of the doubt. That's, I think that's going to be a good, good football game. Man, one of um, us is going to be really beating the other by next week. <laughs> Yeah, I agree with that. Well, how many have we disagreed on? So, so we like disagreed on Denver, Arizona. Already. Yeah, Denver, Arizona. We disagreed on Texans, um, Jags. Texans, Jags. We disagreed Lions, on Lions, Dolphins, and now Saints and Ravens. Does Lions, Dolphins even count? Well, on the score, it does. All right, Dallas at Washington. Unless they tie. Then this really doesn't matter. <laughs> We've had a couple of those already. Yeah. Uh, Dallas at Washington. Um, I picked the Redskins. I I don't know that the Cowboys will repeat their performance from last week. You know, I agree with that. Really, it's I mean, it's it's just a Jekyll and Hyde thing. We see it with the Vikings to a lesser extreme, but the Cowboys are terrible on the road. Like the Cowboys, you know, for the longest time since Jerry Jones opened that stadium, the Cowboys were terrible on their home field and pretty good on the road. Um, even, you know, even in those 12 and four seasons and 13, three seasons, the Cowboys were a better road team and they were a home team, but this is, uh, this is not that way. The Cowboys are not at home. I think, I think Washington kills them. Uh, well, the Niners fresh off of almost pulling a big upset against green Bay. Now get the Rams. How do you yeah. feel like that's going to go? That's going to be one of those take the over for the Rams kind of thing. Yeah, Rams eight and a half point favorites um, in this game. I I feel pretty good about that. Um, I, I don't see any way the the, the the Niners even cover that. So yeah, I'll take um, I'll take the Rams. I think you are too. Okay, so uh, we've got okay one more. Bengals and Chiefs. Yep, we that's a Sunday night football game. Bengals and Chiefs. That, that's another good one. If, if, if Ravens and Saints is the best game on the schedule, then I think that Bengals and Chiefs, along with Panthers and the Eagles, are probably the other two best games on the schedule. I think the Chiefs will bounce back, be just as good as they've been all year, and they'll take care of Bengals. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that, too. I, I feel like it's going to be a, a high-scoring game. The Chiefs are at home, and um, I, I think they're going to win. I think that... I, the, the, I can see a scenario where the Bengals win that game. You know, I would imagine Joe Mixon, who's been very good when healthy this year, is going to get a lot of run. They are probably going to run the wheels off of Joe Mixon if they can, try and control that clock. Uh, Andy Dalton has played well. The Chiefs are not very good defensively. But ultimately, this is going to be a shootout, and no one's going to win a shootout with Pat Mahomes. Yeah, doesn't seem that way. Right, but I, I think the Bengals will play well. But um, It should be a fun game to watch, but I think the Chiefs win. All right, Monday. My- Monday night football, the Giants at the Falcons because, you know, they can't flex Monday night games. So you get a lot of these crap games that last into week seven. There's a lot of terrible games in Monday night football. <laughs> there really but, yeah. is. Yeah, there truly is. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you one thing. Monday night football has basically become the day where you basically watch it to see if your fantasy team wins or loses, right? It's the only reason to watch right now. There's some good ones. I mean, we're in about a month uh, month and change here. We're going to get Chiefs and Rams, which is the game that ESPN would gladly pay a billion dollars for. Yeah. Uh, who are you taking? Falcons. Giants or Falcons? Falcons, yeah, I agree. Falcons are at home. I mean, they just got so much more potential upside, even if they're not playing well. They could always play well at some point, and the Giants don't have that. <laughs> 
Oh, no, no ex- exactly. I mean, you, know, you figure the Falcons have two wins, and, and why I worry about them is, is, just, is really just because of their defense. Because you, you can't get much better than what you get from Matt Ryan. So if you, I don't know if you've seen these numbers. Have you seen the full numbers of how good Matt Ryan's been this year? No, I haven't looked at them. Okay, he's completing 70% of his passes. He's throwing for 326 yards a game. He's thrown 14 touchdowns and two interceptions. And the Falcons have two wins. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's what worries me the most. I don't know how much more you can really expect to get out of Matt Ryan. That guy has been balling out. Um, so, yeah, I, I really just don't have it. I have really no idea how you could possibly expect to get any more from him. Because um, I, I think he's been sensational. All right, so yeah, we agree. We disagree on four different games. So uh, I guess we, yeah, we could split two. But I like to think I'm going to go four zero. Yeah, you think a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I thought that the uh, Broncos would be a good defense to start against you in fantasy. I was right about that, and I thought the Broncos were going to win. And I was right about that. So just throwing that out there, brother. Yeah. That's- Basically, we're not gonna... one thing you split into seven sections. Yeah, okay, fine. Well, we're you not thought one thing. About... <laughs> what? Look, I'm just saying, we're, we're not going to talk about the 14-team league, though. Yeah, that's right. where my good team is. Well, I don't care. We're not talking about that team. All right, well, today I saw Halloween. Did you get a chance to see it? Okay, so I'm seeing it tomorrow uh, with the wife. I finally got a break after all these Astros, uh, after all the Astros craziness. Like, how, like... Like, tell me about, like, how was it? Was it How good was it? Um, it, it I'm not going to say it's amazing. It was a worth worth watching for sure. Uh, they've gone back to the older horror movie formula where it's atmosphere and it's it's not just some guy going around cutting shit up. So I enjoyed that about the movie. It was more of a story and the emotions. And it required acting to move the story, not just some narration kind of crap so i enjoyed it more than well i mean there's been a couple exceptions but basically anything in the last decade is horror movie wise well i feel like the last couple of years horror movies have been on a, on a much better term we talked a lot about this a little bit last week you know hereditary was was uh was a really good one i liked it a lot um i uh enjoyed movies like the conjuring we're watching um i'll tell you one one's a fun movie to watch i'm sure you've seen it my bloody valentine never seen that that movie, if you just want to see dead people, like turn your brain off and just watch people get killed, it's uh, that's a that's a fun movie. I haven't even finished this thing yet. My wife and I are watching it earlier today, and uh, that's that's a good one. There's a lot of dead guts and gore. Turn off your brain. Don't try to make sense of it. I don't even know what the movie's about. There's just a lot of guy shoving a pickaxe in people's heads and ripping their hearts out. It's wonderful. Um, the movie's so called I, Valentine's Day. My, my bloody Valentine. Yeah, my bloody yeah. Valentine. Yeah, so it's on Hulu and Amazon Prime. So um, yeah, I'm not check it out. <laughs> Say what? I'm not watching that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fantastic. It really is just like a lot of just dead people. So you said um, you were going to see Venom. Did you end up doing that? Uh, we are considering very strongly theater jumping tomorrow. Uh, we're gonna go to the early showing of Halloween and then uh, see if we can about jumping into Venom. So I'll let you I'll let you know about that for the next show. But we are planning on seeing that. Uh, I'm really excited for Halloween. I, I really am, and um, I just you know the idea they retconned everything and created this new whole new thing is exciting to me. And uh, I'm glad you liked it, man, because I'm seeing it tomorrow. I'm, I'm really super excited. Um, I was gonna ask you. Uh, you, you, I asked you recently for a recommendation on movies, and I have, I've since forgotten. Uh, is there, a, there's got to be a horror movie that you, that maybe I don't know about that you can recommend to me, and I think you did. Is there one that I need to remember to watch? I recommended one. I think you did. I feel like you did. I feel like we had this conversation last week, and I can't remember what movie you recommend to me. And and if you can't remember either, and if maybe we didn't have this conversation, man, I don't know. I could be tripping. <laughs> but do you have a horror class? Because I, I I respect you because you watch a lot of horror films, and there's got to be something like if I like whether genuinely good or just good for blood, guts, and gore. Anything I need to know to be watching? There's a lot of uh, Asian films actually that 
they're so absurdly insane that they're entertaining to no end. Like, there's this one, it was, um, oh, what was it called? Franken Girl versus something. And then this, the, one of the weapons, this girl, she takes off her tits, and then the chains are linking them <laughs> together, and she uses them as a weapon. It's like, what the fuck? So, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of wild Asian ones out there. You check those out. Okay, I, I, yeah, I, I've, I've seen some pretty bizarre looking stuff out there. Uh, I'll definitely check out some of that. I remember watching one was, uh, there was one called Itchy the Killer. Oh, yeah. That was the weirdest thing I have ever seen in my life. And guys, I, it's not a scary movie. It's just a guy like kills people with special skates. He like karate kicks them to death and he's a loony. And I, I, there's a detective hunting him who's even crazier. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, Itchy the Killer. That, uh, if you guys are just looking for something that will just make you go, what? <laughs> That'll do it. Goods and I have seen a couple of those. We've seen a couple of movies that were just... I think the one I remember watching with you that made us raise an eyebrow the most was that movie The Fountain. Yeah, I, I still... I feel like I missed something because that movie won a lot of awards or at least got nominated. And I, I thought it sucked. I thought it sucked too. <laughs> Everyone liked it. I, I just like... There's a tree, and there's Hugh Jackman, and then there's a, a little orb floating in space. Like, what in the hell is going on? I didn't know what was going on half that movie. Uh, it, it just, yeah. Um, I feel like I fell asleep at some point and just missed something. <laughs> yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I, I thought I was going to pass up in that movie just because I, I got so lost. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And you know me, I like some of those mind turner movies but that one was just a bunch of random nonsense that i guess qualifies as really strong art or something i don't know it's it's weird what it's weird what people like and what they don't like it's strange um i don't know man i'm uh i'm really excited about halloween now i I really am i want to see how jamie lee curtis does and and uh I'm excited for it, and I really, I'm, I'm, I'll probably go back and run through a whole bunch of slasher films as the year goes along. But I was going to tell you one I saw recently because uh, we were talking about a few last week. Have you seen the movie It Follows? No. Okay, it's on Netflix, dude. That's a good one. Uh, I would recommend It Follows. It's like takes place in the 1980s, um, and it's just a good little. It's a good story. I, mean, I, would, I, would, I couldn't, can't tell you it's overly scary. It's more creepy than anything probably on par with hereditary not anything that's going to scare the, the the crap out of you but a good story and just kind of a creative way of turning things and just and and a quick watch too it's like an hour and a half long um but would, would recommend hereditary on net uh, sorry it follows on netflix highly recommend that one that, that's that's probably that's one of the better ones i've seen recently huh so yeah so check that one out brother but uh, no, man, I'm excited. I'm excited for football. I'm excited for uh, baseball and and the World Series. And hopefully, you and I are in a much better mood at the end of this year's World Series than last year's. Yeah, well, at least I can say I'm going to one of the games. So I'll get something yeah, so, out of this year, no matter what. <laughs> so I've got to ask you a question because we talked about this a little bit before we started the show. And I just, but I wanted your opinion for the record. Last year. I, the, if, if, you, if you're the Dodgers, four games in the series, you're tied at two, Clayton Kershaw's pitching game five, you feel really good. The Dodgers give him seven runs of support. He melts down against the Astros. They lose the World Series. I feel like Clayton Kershaw deserves a lot of blame for that, and I think you and I talked about that at, 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 at some extent. Um, when you look at this year, he comes in game five, series tied at two, Pitches one of the best games of his postseason career. They're going. He gets. He closes it out today. They're going to the World Series. Has Clayton Kershaw vindicated himself, or is there still more to be done? He's still got more work to do. I mean, he's got to win the World Series. The team has to win the World Series. So he needs to go and pitch in the World Series and kick ass there. He's certainly on the path. I mean, they needed him to come up big, and he, he came up huge for them in Game 5. After a letdown in Game 1, uh, he came back and, and pitched very well. Um, 
hopefully can do it again. You know, I wonder about game one, you know, because this, this year you, you played some baseball. Today is effectively a bullpen session. Am I right? Yeah. The, today he would have been throwing pitches anyway. I mean, he was under a little more stress, but overall he probably ended up throwing less pitches anyway. So, yeah. Have they announced who's starting game one? Are, are we expecting that he'll start game one of the series? The I'm World pretty series? sure everyone's thinking he's going to be the starter. And is Sale coming back? Is he official yet? I think Sale's do. I think, I think Sale's going to come back too. He, I think they, they held him out during the Astros series, but I, I think that I think he's supposed to come back. But you know, um, right now the Red Sox are just out of their minds, so it's going to be a tough one, and we'll see. But um, I'm excited, man. I mean, you said so. If you as a pitcher, you're saying today would have been a bullpen session anyway, um, and so I'm with you on that one. He's look uh, today. He threw. He threw. What fifteen pitches today? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so I'm feeling pretty good about where he's at. Um, and then the Dodgers team is they're they're built for an AL style series, like the depth that they have, and just put in any hitter at DH. They just, I think they're gonna put up a really good fight. Yeah, I, I was thinking that how 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 the fact that they have home that they don't have home field advantage might actually work in their favor you know like getting more games with the extra bat in the lineup um might do some good but hopefully they can get ryu have a much better series than he because he had, he was great against uh the braves but he had a rough series against the brewers and hopefully they can get ryu right because they're gonna need him you're gonna need more than one guy even if kershaw is sharp you're gonna need more than one guy no um, game two he pitched good who ryu yeah I don't remember him pitching well in game two, but you know, I mean, not I'll not as good as the Atlanta. I mean, that series he was nuts, but he pitched well and they got the win in game two. It was like a three to two score. So. He four and a third innings, two earned runs, four strikeouts. So yeah, not great. I mean, but... not great. I mean, he got pulled a little early, but yeah, I'm with you. No walks, allowed six hits, so a little high in the hit count. But yeah, I mean, they won the game. Um, so yeah, we'll see, man. It's it, it'll be interesting. Hopefully that. They can pull it off, and you know, I've got a guy that I was telling you. There's a guy I used to work with that used to let me have it, or, or sorry, has been letting me have it, including this year. He sends me a text every year since the day I met him. He's a big Red Sox fan. He just says, hey, Danny, the Dodgers are going to choke in the playoffs this year. And I've gotten that message every year since the day I met him. And now our two teams are facing. And if the Dodgers win, he will never hear the end of it. Yeah, like <laughs> if he said it this year, I would understand it. But to say it every year for no reason, that he deserves whatever happens. <laughs> well, well, actually, he has a personal thing with with the Dodgers that he doesn't like the team. I've never actually gotten this explanation because his dad would grow up was was a big Dodgers fan, and then the, it, for some reason. He hates the Dodgers now, even though he got along great with his dad. I don't really don't understand what the whole thing with that is, but. Um, he's, he just, he's been letting me have it. He doesn't like the Dodgers. And so now our two teams are playing and I would love for that guy to have to shut up for the rest of our lives. It'd be wonderful. <laughs> so we will find, we will, cause I'm telling you, man, I don't know that I can do this. If <laughs> the Red Sox beat the Dodgers, I may never hear the end of it. So, uh, we'll see what happens, but, uh, it should be a fun week of sports ahead. And guys, if, uh, if the energy level is, is lacking on goods and eyes next show, You'll know why if you're not a baseball fan. But <laughs> until that moment, I'm Danny. He's good. This is Leading with a Helmet. Enjoy the games, folks. See you.